Hi all! This is a video about programming computer games. Now imagine if you will, you want to make a video game. You got your development environment all set up. You just installed Flash or Java or C Sharp or Game Maker or something else. And you've gone through some tutorials and you've got something to build and work. You know, you did your Hello World or, you know, Example 1 or whatever. And now you're stuck. You want some enemy spaceships to move around the screen, but you really don't have any idea how. Well, that's what this video is all about. Okay, this is my uh, uh, spaceship on a scrolling background here. And uh, this particular version of the spaceship is not moving. Well, it's not moving because there's no actual code pushing it around. You know, every uh, uh, arcade game has code that executes every cycle or every frame, every tick of the clock. And I don't have any code moving the ship around. So it just has an X and Y position in the center of the screen, and that's it. That's all it's got. So let's look at it if I get it to move. There we go. I got some code actually making it move back and forth. Uh, it's just, you know, it's not a very good movement, but it's a movement. So let's look at that code. Let's look at the programming behind what's going on on the screen here. Now you can see that um, basically what we're doing here with this code is bouncing back and forth. Um, the ship goes left until it reaches the 200 position and then it goes right until it reaches the 600 position and then it goes left again. The top line is just adding the current position of the ship to the change in the position and adding and putting it back into the ship's current position. And we're talking about the X position. That's the X position is the back and forth position not the up and down position which is ship dot y. Um, so you can see that uh, if the ship's delta x on the second line is less than zero um, that means that the ship is going left because you know the upper left corner of the screen is always zero zero. So if your ship is actually moving down and to the right then your deltas are positive. Uh, but that's not a big deal. The big deal is that if you're going left and the ship is less than 200, then turn around. Otherwise, if it's going right, and the ship is greater than 600, then turn left. That's basically the, the bottom line of this code. It's, it's kind of ping pong thing. And you can see the result. The ship moves robotically back, back and forth, left and right. Now, I can add nine more ships to the screen, which I've just done. And you can't see them. Why not? Well, because they're all doing exactly the same thing, using exactly the same code at exactly the same time, and they're all sort of stacked up on one another. Um, so what we need to do is take the initial conditions, the initial variables that make up the spaceship, like its position and its speed and its direction, and give them a little randomness to, to help break it up and make sure that if you have a bunch of ships on the screen, they don't occupy exactly the same spot. So let's look at this guy who's moving in the same pattern using the same code every frame but he's, uh, uh, his initial positions were randomized a bit. And now let's see him with all his buddies. And we can see now, since positions and movements are randomized a bit, we have a much clearer idea of where all the different little spaceships are because they're not overlapping each other. You know, chip, simple and cheap. Now let's look at the code that does this. So this code is not normally, you know, executing every frame. It just executes once at the start of the top of the program for each spaceship. And you can see that I'm just adding random numbers to the, the Y position of the ship. That's the up and down position. And the initial speed and direction of the ship. Just throwing some random numbers in there using my RND command in C++. Pretty much any language, any computer programming language you can use is going to have a random command or two. Uh, it'll be a library or a uh, system function, but it'll be some sort of math random command. I'm sure you can find it for your particular language. Okay, so we've got him and his buddies moving back and forth, but that's certainly not the most interesting way they could possibly move. So let's look at other algorithms for moving little spaceships around. Now this guy is moving much more smoothly, a little more lethargically, but we could adjust that later. As it is, he's moving very nicely side to side, not jerkily. Um, kind of interesting. And, and you add his buddies, it becomes even more interesting. Uh, again, there's very interesting smooth motion side to side. 
So this is uh, using sine cosine. Uh, let's see what I mean with the code. You've got your uh, ship X, and it's you know I'm every frame we're setting it to 400 plus whatever comes out of the sine function. Now the sine function takes an angle and returns a number between negative one and positive one. Uh, it's just one of those things. It's a trigonomic function. Um, is very useful for a lot of things in two-dimensional spaceship shooters. Live it, love it, learn it. Uh, and multiply it by 300, which is how we get it, you know, the spaceship moving back and forth across nearly the whole screen. And then the second line just adjusts the angle by adding a little bit to it each time. So every frame it adds the angle a little bit and adjusts the sign or, or gets the sign value that comes out of the sign function as the ship's position. It's actually simpler code than what I showed you before with the jerkier movement. So you see that the sine function has a nice smooth uh, wave to it, which is you know called a sine wave, or you know the sine function is used in a lot of different applications. But um, for video games, it can be used to make spaceships go back and forth. Here we are looking at him and all his buddies and um, uh, that's not quite good enough because we've got a whole other axis to work with so let's look at what happens when this guy is moving using the sine cosine functions in both axes at once and it's even more impressive when you add his buddies that's a nice very interesting pattern that's starting to look like something that you'd see on a professional arcade game in terms of how the little spaceships move. Uh, let's see the code for this, which really isn't much different from what you just saw. So you can see we've only added a new line which adjusts the ship's Y position. Before we were just adjusting the ship's X position. So Y is up and down and X is back and forth across the screen. So the Y screen we actually use uh, the cosine function instead of the sine function. We could have used the sine function but sine and cosine together are are, uh, are useful for a lot of different things uh, and they both do the basically the same thing you give them an angle and they return a value in the range of negative one to positive one notice also that I'm modifying what I give to the cosine function by 0.9 so that there's a little bit of extra interesting pattern so the ships just don't orbit in a circle forever and that's pretty good. That's that's a nice smooth movement for spaceships, but that's not the only movement for spaceships I wanted to actually show you guys. So let's look at this guy. He's a little more oddball, moving in slightly jerky motions, but still kind of smooth. So it, it get the 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 uh, technique looks a little more interesting when you add all his buddies, because then you can see the the near constant agitated movement of these guys. And what's happening here is we're picking a random location for each ship to go to and then using a weighted average to make the ship move there very slowly. So let's look at the code. So we can see that the top two lines are the weighted average. We take the, the current position of the ship and we take ship DX and DOI, which is the position, the place we'd like the ship to be eventually. And we just average them together with a severe weighting to where the ship is now. And then uh, starting on line three, we're just getting a random number to very occasionally, you know, get something to happen inside those brackets. And what happens inside those brackets is simply that we're using our random number function to pick a new target position for our spaceship. So you can see that based on this, the spaceships uh, just occasionally decide to go somewhere else. And uh, they're a little bit agitated about that. Obviously, you can fiddle with the numbers and make them more or less agitated or go further or farther away or closer. Um, uh, it's also notable that because of this weighted averaging it means that the further the spaceship is from its target point the faster it moves. Which again gives it that kind of smooth but agitated state. So that's it. That's, uh, that's several different cool ways to make little spaceships flying around your screen. Uh, have fun making spaceship games. Thanks for watching.